Okay, well, welcome to the audio only version of the A Fool podcast. This is episode 52, an all nighter nowadays. At my age, is just not having to get up and go pee in the middle of the night. What's up, guys? Welcome to the A Fall podcast for true. <laughs> Except for fools. <laughs> Mardi Gras Man 2-3 here. You can't see me. Can't see any of us. That's Joey up there behind his logo. Hi, I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> this is his channel. This is his show. And next to him is Jabo. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm not sure who that character is, but it's we're just... all here. Believe it or not. And this is in true podcast form. So if you're driving, this is perfect. You don't need to see us. Nope. <laughs> you can just listen. <laughs> All right. So we, we're going to go down the notes. And the first topic, believe it or not, we have some notes this week. The first topic <laughs> is the Sig Fig debacle. Oh, man. What a mess. What? And it, we're not going to get to see uh, Jabbo's reactionary face to this. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so, yeah, apparently I'm in uh, violation of uh, Lego law. Oh. Yes, they're going to come after you, the the Lego police. The Lego police. Hey, did you ever see, uh, uh, you remember WKRP in Cincinnati? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You remember when, um, oh, what was the, 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 the DJ? Um, Flat, wasn't it? The cool guy. Oh, um, Venus. Venus, Flat, Venus, not yeah. Venus. Not Venus, the other one. Um, Johnny. Oh, Johnny oh. Thunder? Not Johnny Thunder. Johnny <laughs> Thunder. <laughs> I don't know now. I won't be able to say anything with Johnny Thunder. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. He had the, he had smashed a phone, and he was they had something happened. They had to, to do the uh, broadcast at the he had to do the broadcast at the radio tower, and he thought the he thought the phone police were coming to get him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that one. The phone so, police. Yeah, so the the cable police are coming after brick trains. <laughs> That that may be it. Maybe Lego is slowly removing my ability to to uh, influence people with my illegal sig fig. That's right. Uh, they've, so they've sabotaged I, the podcast. Sabotage the podcast. So the way the story goes, Lego is now saying that you cannot you cannot put your third party logo on their trademarked sig or uh, uh, minifig. That's the understanding. Yeah, Lego like, has the trademark, a 3D trademark for the minifig. Their 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 patent for the mini minifig ran out a long time ago. It was from the 70s, and those typically don't last 20 years, 30 years, something like that. But they trademarked it, marked the logo. They trademarked it as a 3D logo, like Coca Cola trademarked the Coca Cola bottle, the glass bottle. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that you can't put your third party logo on it because it violates their trademark which i i understand because you have to defend those things or you can lose them in a court of law they'll they'll say that they've been uh they're too um you know you can't like trademark a square because it's just too ambiguous but i contend lego's already done that because there have been a lot of third-party legos or logos that they've put on themselves mm -hmm. and well i you know my i have two thoughts on it the first thought is I don't necessarily think they would come after you unless you were trying to resell it and claim it's Lego or whatever, you know, like Joey, right. if the problem isn't you having it. The problem is the person who manufactured it and sold it to you that. So you're just, it's the middleman, right? Yeah. And I don't, I don't know there. I mean, yeah, I, I see your point. I don't disagree that, that and, people and like other, Eclipse graphics may be in a bind with, right. And the thing is, is, I don't know that legally Lego, I'm not a lawyer. First off, let's say that this is not a legal advice. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer and we're just speculating here with our opinions. Right. But yeah, I don't think that, um, I don't know that Eclipse Graphics is doing anything wrong. And I'm just using Eclipse Graphics because they're the ones that have done stuff for me in the past. I'm not going to throw them under the bus and tell everybody that they're the ones that did my sick fix, <laughs> but they did. Uh, and they did a heck of a job, great job for them. But I don't think they're doing anything legal. But if Lego decides to go after them, I don't think they could survive it from a financial standpoint. Right. And just because they're a small 
family owned business, making a living, doing good for themselves. And Lego's a huge giant corporation that'll just smash them. And right. just, and that's who I think the one who they're, you know, and it could be, it could also have to do with uh, whether it's not a Lego product, but everybody assumes it's a Lego product. So like the thir a third party, somebody makes a minifigure that looks like a Lego minifigure. Right. So yeah. it could be used in a religion ad. It can be used in a um, political, political ad. ad. Yep. And everybody assumes that, oh, Lego's taking a stance because they're using their figs in advertising. Well, it's not their figs. It's somebody. Yeah. That's kind of the where I see it. So <laughs> it's kind of like if you record a football game. If you record a, a, you know, a football at the end of the football games, they always said this is a, a property of the National Football League, all rights intended. So if you can record it and you can watch it all you want, but if you try to resell it, that's when you cross the line. Yeah, that's piracy. Right, right. and that's I think it's, it's like I think it's similar, but it's it's about merchandise versus you know piracy. But I think I think that it goes down those lines. Yeah, and I think they are looking more towards either people that are selling stuff, not necessarily even like an Eclipse graphic, but maybe some of these Chinese companies that uh -huh. steal their designs, uh -huh. something like that. And I, I saw somebody who's like, well, um, you know, they've already, as Joey mentioned, had a lot of third-party companies on their minifigures that they've manufactured. And I don't think is Legos like in the future they're not going to see an Exxon or a Shell logo or a Vestas or a whatever other company. You know they could probably still do those things. You know you couldn't put the Imperial logo on a <laughs> Star Wars figure. You know, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, that, I think they'll still do stuff like that. And but uh, somebody said, well, at least they've never done. Um, I think they mentioned the, the 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 stuff that happened in World War Two. I don't even know if I want to say it. <laughs> oh, you know yeah, the bad yeah. guys. The bad guys. Yeah. They, 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 um, they said at least they never done that, and I was like, uh, yeah, somebody's done that. <laughs> Somebody did that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was kind of a big news item, actually, back in the day. Well, that didn't that kind of wasn't that what kind of shut factory down? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so they don't want stuff like that. Uh, that it would be in well, a negative light. Didn't I hear? Yeah. Well, also, did I hear that they had kind of sent out a blanket notification to the lugs saying, don't do it? Yeah. Yeah. Don't put your lug on a, a minifigure. Yeah. And so they can control that by fear. By fear, yes. Um, but if Brick Trains puts that logo y'all see that flashes when he talks, if he puts mm -hmm. that on a, on a, a torso, I don't think they're going to come after Brick Trains. It just would be a PR nightmare for them uh -huh. uh, it would be because yeah because one anything they send me is going to be immediately broadcast out to all of the yeah. social media yeah i mean i i will it, come on i mean what i, I ain't got nothing you'll go but, from a thousand <laughs> you'll go from a thousand to a hundred thousand subscribers in a couple of weeks if that they, happens. yes i <laughs> dare them to send me a cease and dislike <laughs> because i will i will <laughs> I would. They, they say no bad advertising is or no advertising is bad, but let's try it. I'm I'm game. You'll be like you'll be like Rocky Five. Sue me, sue me for what? Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, yeah. I've never sold these mini figs. The only people, literally, the only people that have my sig figs with that logo on. By the way, a mini fig torso that I bought from Lego. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And see, that's the, that's the thing I don't understand. It's like if you're buying, if Lego is manufacturing the product that you're using, you just put something on it. It's like, and it's not offensive. Right. Yeah. In the and end, it doesn't why, really matter. That's why I think it's not about that. I think it's about using it in some kind of message or. I think if you used a logo, your logo in corporation with a minifig and then put it in an advertising campaign or try to use it as some sort of, you know, recognition for your brand or your channel, then I think Lego has a fight there. Yeah. yeah. And it's, fun, <laughs> it's funny because some of the lug members actually use the, 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 uh, or the, uh, especially the ones that are in the, um, 
the media side of it, they would have mm-hmm. something in the past. I think someone yeah. got rid of it. They'd have a minifigure in their logo. Right. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> well, and, it, and it, so the flip side of this is, and I see where Lego's coming from, from a legal standpoint, if they do not vigorously defend that trademark, they will lose it. Yeah. All right. And you know, that it, that's just a lie. That's just the way it is. They, they will, there's some court somewhere, they're going to push a bully around somewhere or push somebody around and somebody will get, take it to court. And, and all these speculations that we have, you know, could go against them, you know, and they could lose that trademark and they right. don't they would be like, why didn't you fight it here? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because there's a, there's a long period here where they didn't fight it. And they did put third party logos on there. So well, they've already muddied the water up already. But again, if Lego does it, I don't think that matters though. Okay. But I, you know that like some of these products that they did make, like I, I remember cause I did buy the, the original Vestas windmill. Mm-hmm. That was something they gave to people. It was never a product that was sold. Right. Even in that, even though they never sold it, well, they did make the uh, the re-release of it, so I haven't looked at that one yet. But this, the the torsos in that set were stickers, right? And there's a lot of third party logos they did for different products, and, and a lot of them had they were sticker torsos even long after they stopped doing pre- predominantly sticker torsos. But there are, of course, there are printed ones. There's printed shell logos on torsos but there are a lot of stickered ones too right no you're right well i think the proof will be in the pudding let's watch over the next year and hey we ain't got nothing better to do except watch what lego does (laughs) let's see how many logos of third party ferrari ferrari is a big one because they produce those now yeah yeah let's see how many of that that those things disappear yeah and all those uh the drivers they've been putting in the speed champions yeah all that Mm -hmm. stuff so and I'm curious, like how retroactively aggressive they will be, because you know a lot of us have been on YouTube a long time and making videos. A lot of people have been posting on Instagram for a long time. But so, like, if somebody's in the land, but they've got right. stuff that they did pre- previously, right? Are they going to ask them to take it the video down? Mm. Mm. <laughs> well, so there's another thing. Okay, let's let's look at that. If um let's say they do decide to go ahead and take the PR nightmare on the chin and they go after people who have these, uh, their third party branded mini fig in their video or in their thumbnail or something two years ago, three years ago, mm-hmm. let's say they go after that. The first thing they're going to have to do is go to YouTube and we know that nightmare, but what, how is YouTube going to react when they say, Hey, they're using our logo. Um, YouTube will immediately remove the video. You, okay. YouTube is totally broken. It's is so easy um, for somebody, especially a larger corporation, to just take videos down, whether or not they have a right to or not. Um, okay. This is actually kind of a big thing where uh, people have done it abusively. Uh, there was somebody who had like uh, just recently had millions of subscribers and got his channel taken down uh, from false flagging. Mm. So. Yeah, you, you can make a YouTube can make a copy. I mean, Lego, they could copyright claim every any of us that had the Lego logo anywhere in our video. They could right. They could go right. and claim the video. You know and that. Uh, so that's interesting too because that fight has come up before. I, uh, some of these car, ch- uh, car repair channels, uh, do it your home kind. Of, uh, there was a guy that was doing car repairs on Teslas or something. Mm-hmm. And any rate, he had a big Audi sign in the back and Audi fought him and fought him and fought him. You cannot put that sign. And the guy said, I bought the sign. It's mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, but he was, you know, he was also, he was not favorable to Audi and uh, uh, that's why they went after him. Probably. That's why he went after yeah. him. Yeah. And then there was the guy that had the Domino's pizza car and you know, Domino's pizza was a, when they lose control of the car or before they lose control of the car, they're supposed to pull all the dominoes. Yeah. Yeah. This guy, this car got wrecked, went to a, to a salvage yard. 
this this <laughs> YouTuber bought it out of the salvage yard with all the stickers on it. He repaired it and started driving it and doing YouTube uh, videos. Yeah, they are furious, and yet he still owns that yeah. car, and all his videos are still up there. Yeah, well, he could. <laughs> but I can still almost see I can almost too. see Domino's side of that because. Oh yeah, he he could definitely be trying to impersonate Domino's. Yeah. They, they they got some other legal ramifications they yeah, could yeah. chase him on. Yeah, but they but, didn't shut him down on YouTube. Yeah, but it, like yeah. how many? I mean, I put a I've put so many Lego logos in my thumbnails. Well, they they didn't shut and, him down, but or is somebody getting it's the right? Because they couldn't video? yet. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I haven't seen anything for a year or two on that, so I don't know. But I do know that it was starting to cost him not because of YouTube, but because Domino's was just, you know, fighting him over trying to get the car back. And it's like, dude, they offered you so much money to just buy the car back. Why did you not just take it? Oh, running? wow. It, yeah. ain't, it ain't worth it, you know, yeah. to, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. Again, not a lawyer, not legal advice. <laughs> Don't do what we say. We're just opinionating here. <laughs> oh my goodness. What else is on our list of okay, things to talk let's about? See. <laughs> Next. You don't have to do them in that order. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I this next you one I have. You yours. <laughs> okay. So I have two notes on here. First one is today. I know Jabo's seen it because every other Instagram picture is the Camaro. Oh, yeah. With the different, you can customize it with three different colors. So, you know, my thoughts are, why do I want to buy the Camaro with three colors when I can only use one? Am I getting upcharged for those extra parts that I'm never going to use? Lego, that's a good point, and it's. I want to not like it. <laughs> it's a cool but, car. It's but a cool car. you notice there has been a trend here lately. There's been more sets. I don't know what the number is i mean it's not like most sets but there are more sets that come with these alternate builds that cause you if you build one of the builds you're going to have all these extra pieces right well that yeah. was that's kind of where i was going with this is how yeah. many how many set recent sets are like that i mean There's, i haven't built the delorean yet so but i know the delorean has you could pick one of three models yeah right so you got all those extra parts for that you just paid for for <laughs> I don't know if that's an OCD thing. That's like I want to be done building and not have a ton of extra parts. But it's also nice to be able to build what you want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like having the option. Yeah, but my thing is, is if I build it and I have the parts left, I just feel like if I those parts I have to keep. Yeah. So I got to put them in a yes. bag and I got to label them because if they get me melded into the connect, uh, exactly, into the yes. collection, your set's not complete anymore. You're right. I agree there too. So I can give you uh, some examples from older sets. Um, one is the, uh, the fan designed Lego factory train. Okay. There were like 40 different things you could build with that. Right, yeah. And so I had I got all those extra parts from I you know I built the main model. That's all I ever built from that was the main model, even though there were all these other designs. Um another one is if you put if you motorize certain trains, like the um Emerald Knight. Mm -hmm. I got those extra pieces. Yes, the Maersk the Maersk yeah. is like that. Yeah. Any, any, really, any of them that you that were not motorized and you motorize them, you end up with these extra parts. That includes yep. the Santa Fe train. The, car, the crocodile, too. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah I have uh, extra parts stuffed inside some Santa Fe's just because I don't want to lose them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I, I There's the OCD is definitely there. It's, I don't want to lose the parts, but... Yeah. If I've if I've added a motor, is the set still complete? If I <laughs> put the rest of the parts into my collection, <laughs> well, so technically, as long as you don't sell them, they're there somewhere, yeah. right? Yeah, and I, I tell you one that I I did just like. There's no way I'm ever going to rebuild these, but it was the um, some of the mosaics where you have uh -huh. the like you could build like let's say Darth Vader, you can build the several different. Or the Sith. It was the Sith one. You could build Darth Vader. You could build Kylo Ren. 
and um, it's like or Darth Maul. I, I think I ended up building Darth Maul on one of them, and it's like, no, nah, I'm not ever going to rebuild this. So those parts are not going to be saved for right. yeah. that set. And all the Beatles, I bought the four Beatles ones, and it's like I took all the extra parts and just put them in the store because there's no point. I mean, yeah, even if I sell them, I would just sell it as as uh, is, yeah, yeah right, as is, right. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. So this, I, just, I mean, the Camaro looked awesome. It looked like probably one of the best cars they've made. Yeah. I don't, I'm not even a Camaro person. Camaro it's looks Chevy, really right? good. It's Chevy, right? It's just, I just that's the first <laughs> thing I thought of is if I want to do it with the red stripes. Why do I need the white or the gray? <laughs> <laughs> well, did you see Alex Nunez's video? He, I didn't watch he, his video. Well, he I, pointed yeah. out. Well, he he pointed out that they he was kind of talking a little bit about it. Of course, he's just using the pictures because it's not out yet. But uh -huh. he shows the different stripes and stuff, and he said, "But they put a picture of the car in red. I want the yeah. red one. <laughs> I did. I <laughs> saw the whole car to be red." That makes sense. I saw that on the box. But, you know, it's like the Porsche. When the Porsche came out, you could build it as a convertible or a with the with the rooftop or whatever. And if you built it, I think as a convertible, you had all those extra pieces from the yeah. roof. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't I mean, let them get away. <laughs> it's a good option to have, but it's just. I, I think mean, it's a good option, but it, how many people are going to change it once they build it? Right. Yeah, I don't think it's a terrible move. I no. can't. I can't complain about it. I mean, but I can also I'll not be happy about it when I, if I buy. It. <laughs> Am I a hypocrite? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's hard not to be a hypocrite when it comes with Lego because so, some things they do are good, and then other things they do, it's like, come on now, come on, people. Yeah. So what's up with these new postcards? I haven't even seen these yet, and we can't um, show them because we. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like a little three D. You remember the small art thing? Well, man, it's kind of hard to explain. They're like like giant fridge magnets. You know, have that oh. the London and the New oh, York. Oh, I did see some of those. I think yeah. I saw one of those. I I saw the London one. Okay. Yeah. So that they have the. I, on a, without looking at my notes and looking at one of the pictures, I, I had some thought about something. <laughs> but, <laughs> so uh, I'm looking. Walmart has the New York one for twenty four ninety five. Is that the one you're talking about? It's yeah, kind of like I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of a cool thing because you know we've talked about before having like if you go to a Lego store in New York, it's kind of cool to have something that's i i like that idea i wish yeah you know, i wish this one had a lego like a little unique lego tile right that represented the lego the new york lego store that would yeah that, that's pretty clever that well that would be pretty clever because it's not <laughs> they won't do it yeah and it, nah. and the thing is is if i know that that's it's problematic for lego to to build a set or create a set that's specifically for a store but there you know there are people out there like me who would like to hunt that stuff i you know i do the passport thing mm -hmm. and you know every store that i go in i make sure i get my passport stamped so i've been to that store and i you know it's kind of a collecting thing and i think it's kind of cool like i have the the apple and then the there was another small lego set that they sold only in the new york stores mm -hmm. you know and my daughter went to new york during high school she did a field trip so she, you know she picked up a couple of things for me while she was there I get it though. It's hard to do that, you know, for every, you obviously can't do it for every store, but you would think maybe your flagship stores. Yeah. The, right. the, the ones that are destinations, you know, right. Yeah. Like Disney Springs or the New York mm -hmm. Flatiron or any of those kind of stores that are kind of cool in and of themselves. Mm hmm. The, the one in Chicago and I can't remember which one it's, I, I think it's the one that's down on the miracle mile. They have the basically what is it, Bricky or whatever, the big dragon that's out in front of Disney Springs out in the water. Mm -hmm. But it's like going through the whole building. Oh, you know, so cool. it is pretty cool. It's not a huge store. It's, it's the same thing at the or it used to be. I don't know if it still is the uh, Rock Rockefeller Center store. In yeah, New York. I, yeah, I think that's kind of a common theme. But yeah, that they do those kind of 
big sculpts like that. And that dragon seems to get used quite a bit. So but I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. Makes it more of a destination, even though it's still a retail store. Did you pick mm-hmm. up your three in one Jabo? The, the I, I did. Yeah, I, mean, I, did. I, couldn't pay, I couldn't pass that up for $12. <laughs> so, I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Earl spends my money. <laughs> and yeah, I'm sitting here looking at this postcard on Walmart. So, <laughs> is, is this is the first One World Trade Center set, then I guess. Yeah. Is it? Or did they, did they do an architecture set that had it? Ooh, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You got me thinking about that. So this, yeah, this postcard it has the Statue of Liberty minifigure for those uh, that don't see us because we're, we're on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> has Statue of Liberty minifigure is like the CMF, and then it has a bridge. I don't know if it's Brooklyn Bridge. I don't know what bridge it is. It looks like it's Spider Man Bridge. Yeah, yeah it has, I think it's Brooklyn. It, yeah, it has the Empire State Building. It has One World Trade Center. I think. So I th- I definitely want to get that for twenty five dollars. Yeah, probably gonna have to pick some of those up myself. How many different ones did they have? That's the only one I saw. At Walmart? No, 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 no. you have them on a uh, brick set. How many did brick set have? I don't know. I have my notes in front of me. <laughs> you don't have it. You don't. You just you you just have it. You don't yeah, have well, it. that's a new thing. I think there was four or five different ones. Okay. Oh, these aren't even sold by Walmart. This is some other... This is a third-party site using Walmart, so I probably won't be buying this. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't do that. That's Yeah, that's, that's questionable. So, the other... I think it's on the list. Do I have the Little Castle? Did oh, yeah. Castle? Yes, and I, I'm, I'm kind of kicking myself for not getting the... Uh, the Cinderella Castle now that the Haunted Mansion's coming out. Right, and I kind of wonder if they're going to do all the rides because when I oh. seen the Haunted Mansion come out, I thought I immediately because I did the same thing. I thought, uh oh, I didn't get the Disney Castle. Oh, I, you know, man. I thought, thought so. You know, Is I went on and it, the Disney it's, Castle? it's out of stock. So I got my email in to you know notify me when it's in stock, and then I went and did the only sporting thing I could do. And found the cheapest one on eBay, Seal Seal oh. Seal. <laughs> uh, so I have it, and then you know, in August when the Haunted Mansion comes out, I'll get it, and then I hope that they're going to do. You know, we're going to see some more because I that it's kind of like the architecture scale, probably a different. It's not the I mean, it's obviously bigger mm-hmm. than the architecture scale, but it's kind of neat. You know, well, seeing them. Do- I, well, they, what what I think is neat about them is they also come with a minifig. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, it's kind of like a, it's a mini build, but it has a the mini fig that to represent. Yeah, I, I just. Yeah, I cool. see. I could see that as being, you know, not only the mini figs being collectible, especially if those are unique, and the Mickey Mouse, as far as I can tell, I think that's a, excuse me, a unique print to his torso. It's like a little bow tie and a tuxedo kind of jacket. Mm-hmm. Um, wow, you know what? Having to explain what this stuff looks like in an audio only podcast. Yeah. Today's the last day for double VIP guys. Which yeah. By the way, when you hear this, it's long gone. Long yeah. gone. So I what did y'all get? Did y'all buy anything during the no, double VIP? No, I, I was gonna buy the DeLorean, but it's still out of stock. That's what we love about double VIP. Mm. Yeah. I picked up I picked up a couple sets for the uh, for uh, part out type how stuff. Much, Joey, how much did you pay for your castle? Not to be nosy, but um, how much, uh, uh, above uh, retail. Yeah, I, th- I think I paid fifty for it. Okay, I think. Which I think when it came out, wasn't it like a thirty-five, forty yeah, dollars? What I'm looking at. Yeah. I mean, I didn't go crazy over, but and 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 the reality is, is when it comes back in stock and on Lego Shop at Home, I'll probably I'll probably buy another one because Heather's going to open this one and build it. She'll uh, she'll build it. She'll have a little display of them all as they come. Yeah. So. Yeah, I thought I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I was, I was, I was. I don't know, surprised, shocked, disappointed, thrilled, all at the same time when I saw the Haunted Mansion. I thought, uh-oh, they're getting ready to do a series. Dang them. <laughs> Dang them. 
this has been a bad year. Yeah, because they're draining my my yeah, yeah account. and that's that's the other thing I put is that uh, you know not only sets like this but all of these big expensive sets. Yes. How 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 can you keep up and who can keep up? You can. I've had to make more choices. You know, uh, it's almost Sophie's choice. It's like which 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 set do I not buy? You know, because it's like you know the blow the budget up. Uh huh. So what, I, are, what 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 are things that have kind of fallen by the wayside then that you might have otherwise got, but now because we're they're stretching our wallets. So know? I'm no longer interested in brickheads. At one time, I wanted to get every okay. brickhead I could get. I could see yeah. you dropping that. Yeah. Um, Brick, brickheads is one for me too. Yeah. The uh, um, what was the new I'm, the co I'm, the coaster? I'm kind of I'm on the fence. There was another uh, one that came out. Well, the the DeLorean. I kind of I backed off on it. It's not really an expensive set. Well, I haven't bought any of. I've only bought. I was collecting all the Harry Potter sets, but I think I'm off that train. Yeah. The only time I buy them is if I'm parting them out. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was getting all of the new lines that, but. I don't think I'm getting any this year. I bought one. It's the uh, the dragon. I bought that one. Well, so but, famously, I didn't get the um, the the uh, daily bugle. Yeah, and really. I, yeah. No, I never have. I, and at this point, I, it's out of stock, right? I, yeah. uh, I was about. Let's see if it's in stock because it's double VIP. You'll pull. You need to. If it's need in stock, you got to buy it now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I've I've totally don't look at like city anymore. Even though I yeah. there are I guess sometimes things that I would like to get, but it's kind of limits me that now. When I go into a Walmart or Target, it's almost like it, I used to go in almost every day to one of those stores, if right. not multiple of those stores, and now hardly ever yeah. go in because I'm like, why why am I going to go in here? There's not going to be anything that I'm going to want to buy, right? <laughs> Right. I either already got it or I can't afford, you know, the, the these other themes like you know, I cut out friends except for the space shuttle. I <laughs> cut I cut out city unless it's a space shuttle. Um, yeah. But you know, city sets to me have always been there Well Joe, it's out, of, it's, sets. it's out of stock at Lego, but it's in stock at Walmart. Daily bugles in stock at Walmart. Yep. Sold it's by Walmart third, or by yeah, third party? It's probably a third party. No, I, I think it's safe, sold by Walmart. Two nine, it's two ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, three day shipping. I'm pretty unless sure it's, it's sold unless by Walmart. it's free shipping. It's got to be free shipping if it's from Walmart. Let's see. I added it to my cart so I could check it out. He is desperately trying to get me to buy something. <laughs> I've already made well, decision you know, not I, to buy. <laughs> I, I had, no, I'm pretty. Yeah, this is a. Uh, Taxes calculated at checkout. Uh, Earl's going to accidentally buy yeah, it. Yeah, that would be hilarious. <laughs> uh, darn it, I don't remember my password. Yeah, good thing, probably. Uh, password, one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. Password. Did I, tell you that, did I tell you that happened at work uh, a, few, it's a couple months ago, but... Um, Somebody was trying to remember their password, and I said, "Oh, it's password one two three four, and it literally was the password." I'm like, "You gotta be kidding me!" Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you head of security? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I got all these complicated passwords. I just write them and leave them on my computer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, so the. <laughs> So a high school that I, uh, uh, well, I didn't go to the high school, but it's a high school that's in, in my current hometown. At any rate, they had a dial-in computer system back in the 80s, and they had literally wrote the phone number for the dial-in and taped it to the monitor. But the window in the hallway, you could see the number <laughs> from the hallway, <laughs> so all the kids were walking by could dial into the computer system. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and, you know, back in the 80s, they didn't have – security if you knew the, yeah. the phone number to log in you pretty much knew how to get it. yeah yeah it was going to connect when you dialed that number it was going to connect yeah, yeah. 
Oh my goodness. Uh, so did everybody get a Galaxy Explorer? I accidentally got two. Oh, you accidentally got two. Well, Wait. that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. There's two <laughs> orders for them. <laughs> I think I ordered one. Did I ordered. Get- I ordered one with some other stuff to get to, I don't know, to get point, whatever it was. The free gift, right? Yeah. yeah. But then I guess a day or two later, I, you know, I was working shift work. I'm always working shift work. But I, for some reason, I have two orders for one. I have one that I ordered just by itself. So I'm like, hmm, well, I guess I wanted two. I don't know. You know what's crazy is is how some sets, like the De- DeLorean, have been out of stock. But yet the roller coaster is... What are we going? On? Everybody couldn't wait for it, and now it's it has no problems with stock level. Yeah, it is kind of strange. Is, are they missing the mark? Or are they, they, you know, did they make the right amount of of uh, roller coasters, but the wrong amount of DeLoreans, or was the DeLoreans just that much more popular, or is the roller coaster just not as popular? The roller coaster is probably hitting the price point pretty hard. Well, yeah. this is the thing I don't understand because, like. That's a high price point. Yeah. But that, you remember the, the when I forgot about the BrickLink designer program, you had stuff at that price point that sold out in a day. Right. Mm-hmm. So are, are they, are there more than, I guess there's more than 10,000 <laughs> roller coasters available. Yeah. It's I would imagine. Of, you know, the BrickLink, I've gotten two emails over the last week and a half for the Venetian one. It, I got an email that says it's basically telling me that it's out of stock and it's going to be a while longer. I, I get an email almost daily about one of those early ones. I can't remember which one it is. Hmm. Um, that they, they say we're sorry, it's going to be longer. Uh-huh. And, and then the two days go by, and another I get another email. Sorry, it's, it's going to be longer. I'm like, why do you keep email me, emailing me? Just email <laughs> me and ship it. Yeah. There must be something, something must be changing in the computer system and it triggers emails. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So I got a, a comment on one of my videos talking about the BrickLink designer program. Sorry if I'm getting off on a tangent. This won't take long. Um, it's fine. <laughs> but he said that he heard, I don't know if he heard or experienced it, but of customs confiscating those sometimes because they thought they were knockoffs really like, really yeah so I, i'm gonna start a rumor here on the a fool podcast so well okay hang on a second okay good rumor i like it so <laughs> uh controversy all right um is he out of the country out of the u.s i think he was in the u.s so he's saying that they were coming into the u.s getting confiscated yeah so customs and you know i've had several packages recently that have been come back taped and Mark, they've been inspected by customs. I've never had a problem with anything being missing, but so, they, I have heard like MR Productions bought a legitimate Lego product from Asia. It's legitimate, it was not counterfeit, <clears throat> and customs destroyed it. Nice. Really? Yeah, they thought it was counterfeit <laughs> and they destroyed wow. it. And it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I still, I mean, whatever we, I, I, I know that's a big problem, but I, how do they, how do they get the right to destroy yeah, something yeah. without due process? That is, uh, it's the government. That's what well, I, I, yeah, I know, but I mean, but, it seems to be kind of hinky there. Yeah. You know, like let's if, get back if, to the guy that's getting his stuff confiscated. Cause I mean, they, like they if, it lepin, if it was Lepin. Well, sure, but that's pretty obvious. But at the same time, I would still think there was some sort of due process. You know, put it in a warehouse. Somebody's got to make a jur- you know, a, a judge. Somebody's got to, even if it's a, a circus trial, you would you think there's the, something. The sad thing is that it, the the if it is a counterfeit, the counterfeiter still got their money. Right. <laughs> the yeah. Person the person who lost. <laughs> that's exactly right. The person who lost out was the guy that just was spending. But you know, there I know that. At times, like the customs agents, they look at it as the person that bought it was just as, as criminal yeah, intent. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that's why I don't know. I've bought some stuff, and I will not buy Lepin, but I've bought from this company called Laws, which is probably it's like the Nano Blocks Lepin, right? And uh, they never ship their stuff in a box, like in a uh, 
it, it, it always comes in like, and when I say in a box, it's not a boxed set. It's just bagged. It's a bagged set, yeah. <laughs> I think that's because if they put it in a box, for, number one, it costs more to ship, but also it'd be more likely <laughs> to get confiscated. Get confiscated? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Well, I'm I'm still I'm I'm, I'm hung up on this because this is bothering me. But if the guy is getting okay, so are we saying that Lego or Bricklink is manufacturing these sets or putting them together outside of the country? So that means they're outside of Bricklink because Bricklink's a wholly owned United States thing. They all live here, and Lego's doing them outside and then shipping them one at a time into the United States. I did, I wouldn't. <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't think that's what's happening. That's. I would think it would be more likely they sh- shipping cases. Shipping, yeah, because yeah. I, I don't know how it works with bricks and pieces. You remember back in the day, if you ordered stuff that came from Denmark, did they ship your order to the United States on a ship to one of their distribution centers here in the United States, and then ship it to you? Right. Yeah, I don't know about bricks and pieces because the last one I got looked. Like it came from overseas because I you couldn't I couldn't really get a good read on the actual destination of where it was. It didn't say Connecticut, you know, or any place else in the United States. It came came offshore, um, but it also came from I would assume that customs and them know as a known good address, right? You would think if it's coming from a Lego factory that they know, they would know. Okay, don't destroy that. Yeah. If it's coming from, you know, somewhere out in the middle of a known area, either in Asia or whatever the other countries are in Europe that are big in on counterfeiting, you would think that that would be more questionable. Like, you know, or I could see where M&R may have got something that maybe it came from a questionable area and got, even though it was legitimate, and got flagged. It's like, okay, stuff coming out of that area is going to be highly suspect so, anyway how, how would he know he got it got destroyed did they like okay, here, here's the comment i i think i i think i did misrepresent his comment a little bit it's this is somebody in europe buying this from somebody in the u.s so it's there, not actually co- coming from bricklink there we go okay yeah so he said i never had he is when i was talking about customs he said i had to pick up the bikes from the first bricklink designer program which was sent out of California to the European Union at the customs office because the boxes didn't show a relation to Lego. So he had, let me see, I had to pick up bikes from the first first BrickLink designer program at the customs office because the boxes didn't show a relation to Lego. That's right. They didn't have Lego logo on them. Right. They did not, no. And he said they considered it an illegal knockoff. I was actually lucky because I've heard the first shipments of those were destroyed by customs because of that. That's so, crazy. So you said M and R had something had a, a legitimate set destroyed. It was a, it was a uh, a banner that is used in stores. Well, how would he know? Did they like destroy it and then send send it to him anyway? No, he didn't get it. <laughs> it I had to find the video. He probably got a notification. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, sorry for your luck, but we just destroyed this because it was counterfeit. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, yeah, there's a lot of people that have got those. There are these really long banners that, that might be in right. a store or something like that. And, you know, well, you I, know I've, I've seen those too, and I've always kind of wondered, because there's been a couple of them that have been pretty cool looking, and I thought, man, but why are they always coming out of Asia stores? Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you don't... Well, <laughs> And, and then sometimes there are things I think, well, maybe it's, it is counterfeit. I don't know. Cause when I was looking for Harley Quinn figure, it's like in the, from a set that came out in the early two thousands, one of the first Batman, that, that first series of Batman sets, it's mm-hmm. like, uh, you can't find anybody, but there's this one store that has like 50 of them. Right. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Is, that's probably counterfeit. Even though yeah. it's on Bricklink, right? Hmm. Mm. Man, illegal trademarks, counterfeit. We are all into it tonight, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
What else is on the notes, what's, sir? Hey, what's next? It's a good yeah. thing we had notes for tonight. <laughs> Uh, it's been a slow see. news week. Yeah, a slow, been a news slow week. week. A slow news week. Yeah, has there been? Well, there's been a little bit of Lego news. Well, just real recently, there was a little bit. Yeah, the new Camaro. Uh, Camaro. Uh, did, didn't something else just come out too? A new. Oh, they announced the new Lego Ideas set that just came out. Mm-hmm. So it's old news by the time everybody else gets it, but. It was new news to us today. Um, I don't think the big thing that's in the notes there, the big table, I don't think that's going to present well audio only. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure that it would have presented well video either, but it's and interesting. You, you did some research. Did What are you doing? You, you're going by weight? Okay, so what I did was I took – well, first off, I started with some police sets. I just took – I just went into brick set. And typed in police set, did a search and pulled up every set that was named police set. And then I went in and put many, uh, uh, retail price. Now you also got to remember these go back to like 2005 or something, but, yeah. um, so there is inflation prices in there, but I put piece count shipping weight and I divined the shipping weight by taking the brick link set weight minus the instructions minus the box. So that should get it down pretty close to the actual weight of the the bricks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I divided it out, got piece counts, weight per weight per piece, weight, uh, price per pound, price per kg, price per piece. And I tried to kind of see if there was a trend, like because we you know we often say that the sets are getting bigger, but the pieces are getting smaller. So even though we're paying, we're still paying that approximate 10 cent per piece price we're paying for smaller pieces um and the thing is is i couldn't really see i did you know it's too small of a subset or uh, it's too small of a population that i created there i need to create a uh, just keep creating more and more i added some star wars sets i added some other things but honestly it looks like since like 2005 the, the sets that i picked there it they stay in that 10 to 13 cent price point range, which is odd. Yeah. Now one of the, a couple outliers, one I was kind of strange or kind of interested in was the Optimus prime set. And again, I'm not looking at it, but from what I remember, it has a, yeah. Price per pound is what's interesting on that. The, yeah, it's like $50 per pound or something, isn't it? Yeah. I just, I don't know. Are you sure this is correct? (laughs) <laughs> Maybe not. Sixty-eight dollars and fifty-four cents per pound. Okay, how many pounds was it? It's the you have the weight of the bricks as being two point four eight pounds. The weight of the bricks is two point eight four. Okay, so that was and eleven cents per piece. It's eleven. It's um one thousand. I don't have it in front of me, so I can't. I'm it was all it. I'm you, Yeah, well, it's the Optimus Prime is fifteen hundred eight pieces. It retailed for one hundred seventy dollars. Weighed. 1125 grams for the pieces not the instructions not the box right price per piece 11 cents price per gram 15 cents yeah. price per pound 68 dollars and 54 cents so 68 times however many pounds should be close to the retail price yes yeah so that's the high, by far the highest by weight right on this list um, so it'd be interesting uh, to, to compare things, but I think back in the day, you know, like these large sets were unusual. Yes. Yes. And, and so like, when I think of like, like, in okay, let's take pirates and castle, for instance, I love the pirates and castle themes. Right. And I think some of those early sets, if you were to do price per piece, they, I could see them being in over 10 cent per piece. Cause you know, you got a 180 piece set. It might've been $20, but it had the big castle walls. Right. Um, one of the biggest pirate sets was that, um, Oh, what was the one? Uh, Eldorado, not Eldorado fortress. Although that's a big one. It's the other big one. Um, the bigger than that one. Um, uh, <sighs> Bigger than the Eldorado. Uh, I don't know. 
Yeah, it but it's it's like now now I'm really bugged because like I, I can't remember the name of it. I'm gonna. What get... you two are gonna have to do the? I still have internet to look for. What, <laughs> what, 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 what was we looking for? The pirates, a, a pirate set from the early run of pirates. And now it's just, I, I got to look it up. And I should know this, the name of this. It's going to be in the uh, first couple of years of Pirates. It's one of the, uh, it's not the Eldorado Fortress, which is an all-time classic. I need to search these by set number. Hold on a minute. As I'm looking, this makes for great... Uh, yeah, I may have to go audio. Name it in the in the comment. Somebody's typing it right now. Yes. If, if, if they made it this far <laughs> into the video, um, you know what? I can't even remember the set number. Oh, this my eyes are hurting. Okay, I'm trying so to look. So I'm looking into Pirates theme, and I'm looking for a big set, right? Yeah. Wait, let me type the set number. See if I can just find it by the set number sixty-two. That one. I, I'm in all the little sets. The I want to do Pirates thing. one. Well, see, I could probably add some of these sets to the to the spreadsheet. I, I think I will. I'm gonna keep the spreadsheet and then go back and add some of these other soldiers fort. It's Imperial. It's Imperial something. It, El, okay, El Dorado Fortress is is Imperial soldiers. It's why am I not seeing this stinking thing? Did it, is, wait, is this a uh, man? What's that? Uh, Mandela effect? The man, yes. Did we talked about that last week. Yeah. Um, yeah, because there's, you know, everybody's Imperial screen chat, chatting it. Imperial Outpost. There it is. Okay. okay. <laughs> it is uh, 6263. That is not it. That's a tiny set. Uh, well, you said Imperial, so that's what I was going with. I'm still it's the Imperial at... Trading Post. There it is. Oh. oh. It's, it's at 6277. It came out in 1992. Oh, I was almost there. It, I almost yeah. had it. Yeah. So that set <laughs> was 570 pieces. Oh. All right. All right. That's a, a ginormous set for 1992. Right. Also, it had one of the big base plates, the big uh, raised uh, rock base plates and a regular blue base plate and ship holes and the oh. the larger elements for the walls of castle walls and things like that. Right. So I bet you it weighed 1,900 grams with the box. So I, I'm i thinking the price per piece on that set, or the, yeah, the price per piece is probably high. Yeah, the, the problem with like brick set is they don't necessarily have the MSRP yeah. for the older sets. So it, it you know, I have to either look, dig through catalogs or whatever to find those original prices to yeah. see what the original price per piece is. But then you also have to worry about inflation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what I would mean, that because. And that's 30 years ago. So, you know. Right. If that set was $100, then it would be like, what, 250 now? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that's what makes these. Yeah, these comparisons like this to be kind of that's why I kind of heavily weighted it on on weight mm -hmm. because that seems to be the thing that we all kind of key in on is something like and I was surprised as I was looking through the Optimus Prime parts list, it is full of little bitty pieces. I get it because it's mechanical, but you know, something like that, I would have thought, oh, it's gonna have some big giant panels or whatever, and it doesn't not yeah. lots. Yeah, because of all the things they had to do with it to make it move. Right. So it is it is one of those that it's lots of pieces, lots of little pieces, high part count, high uh, uh, pound, uh, price per pound weight thing, if you will. Mm -hmm. so. I, I would think I don't know if you had this on the list. So you, you had the ATAT -AT and it yeah. was almost fifty four dollars per pound, which is because, you know, that's a high eight hundred dollars is a lot. Yep. I wonder if the um, Star Destroyer actually weighs more. Yeah, I don't know. I I I noticed that it pretty quickly when I started adding the Star Wars stuff that it you know you're going to pay Star Wars tax. But actually, honestly, if you look at some of the city set or the the police station stuff that I did there, you weren't really 
they weren't out of bounds. They stayed in that 10 to yeah. 13 cent price yeah. range. Yeah. It is uncanny. You should have done some Jurassic Park sets with those big dinosaurs. The big dinosaurs. The uh, one of the, I think the one that has the highest weight per piece, which I believe is a police station, has a raised base plate in it, which is what skews that uh, <laughs> price per, or uh, weight per piece calculation. You know, where I'm trying to calculate how big, you know, and that's an average, right? Um, Because I think it should say on there, too, how many grams a two-by-four brick weighs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. It's at the bottom. Um, Yeah, so then you can kind of look at and see, you know, are your parts bigger than or smaller than a two-by-four brick on average? Considering that's what, you know, everybody kind of gravitates to the two-by-four brick as the classic piece. Mm -hmm. 2.32 grams. So... <clears throat> what if a set had one piece and it cost $150? Are you talking about the wooden mini picker? <laughs> I, wa- I wasn't, but that's a that's a good call there, Earl. <laughs> <laughs> that one's pretty heavy, too. Yeah. <laughs> That'll throw my calculation off, won't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, you want the one thing that's not wrote on there that will probably blow everybody's mind is I got a lot of calculations on how much uh, weight or yeah, the cost per weight. So like whatever it is, $55 a pound or a gram or KG or whatever. I got it in pounds on there, right? Yeah. It is. Yeah. So I don't know what Lego pays and I know they eat their own dog food, meaning that anything they recycle, they, they put back into the process. So those all lower their cost. But my understanding, uh, current price va- uh, price of ABS plastic per kg natural, which is that milky white color, so no colorant added to it, is like two and a half dollars or around five dollars a pound. Yeah, that's it, so. That's, I mean, all the rest of that is to pay to keep the lights on at Lego. And I'm not mad about it because, you know, some of those are 20 to $30 range per pound and some of them are $50 per pound. But it seemed I mean, like they were, other than some of those outliers, that it seemed like they were all staying pretty equal well, to that calculation. It's like, it's like telling an artist that the paint only costs $10. It is. It's painting. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I get it. I get it. I mean, there's more, there's much more goes into a set. There I is. Mean, yeah. You got production time. You got, you got, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of things that go into that. It's just, I just find those things interesting. <laughs> so, so I don't, to change the subject, there's Good, two. Cause I think that subject's <laughs> hard to follow. <laughs> so there's two, there's an older one, an older set that came out. I say older, a couple years ago. And now there's a brand new set coming out that it's so they made the venom the venom and the carnage helmets, but there's no Spider Man. Right. So now they're making a giant build a fig Bowser, but there's no Mario. What's up with that? Why would you not lead with the star of the show and then his supporting cast? I think a Mario would sell a lot better than a, a Bowser. Because what good is Bowser without Mario? You can have Mario by himself. You can. You're, you're right. But the Bowser, I'm not a, I'm not a big Mario fan, right? I know who he is. I get it. But that Bowser is cool. Yes. All right. So I, I wasn't. I don't know why I didn't catch this. I do. I did notice that people were upset about Bowser, and I didn't understand. But now I do. <laughs> because that. Yeah, it's, it's awesome looking if you if you if you like Mario, right? But if you like Mario, again, as Oral was saying, yeah, why didn't you start with Mario? Why didn't you start with Mario? I think because the the Mario uh, sculpture that somebody was working on, although it may be awesome looking too, wasn't as awesome as Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you just look at the round the the way they've done, I was like. Wow, that yeah, it, it is neat if you look at the hands, the pieces that they use for the fingers. It, it's cool, but you got to have Mario. Yeah, I agree. You got to have, have to. It's like yeah. having Disney without Mickey Mouse, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I but just, if they if you yeah, have if they were doing Disney stuff and we kept getting Pluto and Goofy, right? Uh, and Eeyore, right? <laughs> and oh, getting, bother! What <laughs> <laughs> was me? Whoa, he's me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just that. As much as I, the Bowser's cool, I'm not gonna. I'm I'm not gonna buy it. Yeah, there's another one that no, I'm not gonna buy. Although but, I think you know, it's really cool. <laughs> You know, it's the same thing with the uh, the Cinderella cat. If Mario comes out next year, then I'm gonna be might be kicking myself because I didn't buy the Bowser. You're right. <laughs> you <laughs> might. And then if you buy the Bowser and Mario never comes, it's gonna be like, come on now. Yeah. Come on, Lego. <laughs> so, I'm thinking how much money I've saved by not being interested in Mario. Oh. Because there's been so many products, and I know a lot of the the fans of it have actually been happy with some of it. Mm-hmm. I guess. I think so. Yeah. Um. So I th- I don't think Lego's done a bad job overall with the N- Nintendo, but they well, haven't. All they did did was get me to buy the uh, NES thing. Well, the 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 thing the the one thing that keeps going. So that game. I don't know if the gameplay relies a lot on the app, but the building part, you kind of play the game only because I've parted out sets. You, you, I think you build it as you play the game through the app. And then once you get it built, then you can play with the, uh, the little virtual Mario and everything. I'm so glad I never bought it. Right. But <laughs> the thing that keeps that app going is they keep making new sets. What's going to happen when the app dies? What's what's going to happen when they stop making new sets? Then the app will go away. Yeah. Well, I so I I did. I have a Mario and a Luigi and a few of the sets because I thought Dakota and, and Cassie would really like it because you know Heather really Cassie. Wait a minute, I got my girls mixed up. Cassie <laughs> would be my daughter. My <laughs> wife Heather, she's really into the Nintendo stuff, but they. So for Dakota, it's the wrong age for him. Yeah. So it, it you know, it, it's too complex for him to play. Uh, Heather never took a real big interest in it. Now I don't know my daughter Cassie; she might take a little more interest in it. But I don't remember Mario ever being anything that she was really big into. But you can play it without the app. In fact, it's easy to play without the app. Uh, right. But you're right; building it requires the app. Right. Right. But I think after you've built the several of those sets, I'm not sure that it's well. No, you're gonna need, you're still gonna need the app. Those sets are not they're not self X, or you can't just build them by looking at the box. They gotta you gotta have to have the instructions. So Lego's going full circle. We started yeah. with no instructions, and we're going back to no instructions. No instructions. Yeah. Yeah. No, nope, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna forget what they do is, and they make physical objects that people play with yeah i like i want i want the physical stuff i don't want the apps and i don't mind the electronic stuff like the mario that that's not bad the the stuff that they do for this the the ev1 and all that kind of stuff that stuff's not bad even though you you kind of need the app for that to get a program but yeah as long as stuff can still be usable even after it's discontinued right like I, I guess there aren't many people out here complaining because they can't run their Windows ninety five right. computer. <laughs> right. But you know, I have games that ran on Windows ninety five that we can play on our computer. Right. Uh, you have to sometimes you have to have like special programs or apps that you run on your computer so that it will play. But I th- I think it's good when you can re- do something something retro still works right like you can actually have a nintendo nes play system and if it's in working order i mean you can still play your games right you don't need the internet to update it to play it right Right. um and so i i I would like if lego make uses technology i'd like them to make it future proof meaning that it may be like in the future, it m- might not be something that somebody would want, but if I wanted to use it, I could use it. Right. 
Well, so perfect example. And since this is audio only, you guys can't see any of this, but I, so I, I've actually moved into the, into the main basement area. So we're, I'm in here where the train, the city almost. Hey, train yeah. out. Are you wearing <laughs> pants? I am wearing, well, I'm wearing shorts. <laughs> <laughs> but I am closed. Thank you. But over on the shelf that nobody ever sees in any of the angles because it's one of those, you know, it's all about the angles, right, Jabbo? Yeah. Yeah. Um, camera angles. That's right. So there's a sumo bot that I took to Brick World several years ago, and it's an EV3 robot. And I'm pretty confident that when I throw batteries back in it, turn it on, it'll do what I programmed it to mm -hmm. do five years ago. Well, I have no way of reprogramming it. So that oh, you need a, oh wait, the V three, you need an app to program it. Well, I don't. If I don't, I don't know how to program it. I mean, maybe I can program it from that little screen. They can be programmed from the screen. It's just hard. I uh, well, I could imagine because the the oh. you know it's got a sumo bot robot or sumo bot program in there. So that's not like you know if go left then go right kind of thing. It's oh. complicated. I had that app on my phone. I think I deleted it. See that. And that may be one of those things I haven't kept up on it. So I don't know what the current status of any of that is, is if, if, if I, you know, can yeah. program it or, or even the worst is I, cause I know I did it on my computer. Yeah. So I, you know, I did it from the computer, but I don't have the original source yeah. file. So if I can't download it from the little brain box, I'll have to start over. Well, some of that stuff, like, uh, was it the 4d bricks guy or somebody that like, they could hack, hack it where one of those uh, devices, the power functions or something, where they could get to the source code or something, and they could control it, and they could run it from an app that they made. It probably, yeah. But, I mean, I think the, there will be people that are smart enough to figure out how to use the technology, but it won't be through the app that, lego made once lego discontinues it right and then so you you know that brings you right back to where you were just talking about you have a game that's on a windows 95 computer and yeah you can do some some workarounds and hacks and run it in legacy you know you can do these things to make it play and and that's that's great for you because it's a piece of nostalgia it's something that you want to do and you take the time to do it and get it done but then in the average person that picks one of these up in a yard sale they're, they won't be able to do it. Yeah, they're stuck. Yeah, and they yeah. probably may, or they may, but you know, the average person it picks it up is they're gonna they just bought something in a yard sale or flea market or whatever that's basically a brick, mm -hmm. <laughs> literally, figuratively. Uh, do any of y'all still have a VHS player? Nope, I do. I don't have oh. it plugged in, okay. but I do have one. Yeah, I still have mine. I, I guess I've got a. Mine is a VHS slash D, uh, DVD player, yeah. whatever recorder on it. I mean, there's got to be people in our age group or younger even that have like their wedding. Yeah. Oh, VHS. We do. I, I, the wedding tape was the last thing that we trans. I transferred yeah. into the computer, and and of course it's really low res, yeah. but I transferred it into the computer, and and I have not pursued a video player since. Yeah. And I, you know, we have, I got tons of VHS movies sitting in there. It's like, well, one of these days they're going to go to a flea market or a bookstore or, you know, somebody that buys those things mm -hmm. and they'll get sold for pennies on the dollar. Yeah. I'm, I'm still, I'm looking for my daughter's birth video. I actually put it on a DVD. Right. And I have the VHS and we haven't been able to find it for like the last 10 years. I don't know where it is. The the VHS or the DVD? Neither oh, one. We can't either find one. either one. We can't find either one. So my daughter used to like to watch it when she was younger. Ah. Uh, and it's like I don't know. She's also very like she clean. She likes to throw things away. I was like, you didn't throw mm. away. <laughs> She's like, no, no, no. I never do that. And I'm like, okay. So she's the opposite of a hoarder. Yeah. She would never Not. throw. They, this is the same person who would never throw Lego away. And she threw away. Yeah, she threw away the bionicle <laughs> set. <laughs> oh man! But uh, so yes, yeah, but yeah. If you, uh, if you got a VHS tape and you haven't played it in twenty years, it might not be very good. Uh, I still have quite a few VHS tapes. Yeah, I do too. I still have. I still have a. I have. Just about every Bulls game that was recorded, that was televised from their 
last year, the year of the flu game. Yeah. Oh, so 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 get this. So the Braves won the World Series in 1995. Yeah. I re I recorded on VHS the final game. Okay. I got that tape somewhere in the basement, and I recorded like the post game celebration. So mm. you know, it was low low quality. Right and all that. So they won last year, 2021. I recorded it on my DVR. Oh no! And then I canceled Directv. <laughs> so now I don't have it. Now you don't have it. No. Yeah. I'm so and I was like, oh, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the whole movie TV industry yeah. trying to close that loop, that analog loop. Yeah. And. Controlling so, their their trademark, their brand, their copyright, or whatever. So, and so it Joey, brings us full circle. <laughs> so, speaking about apps, Joey, Duncan okay. just got the new train. Yes. And he said, in the new trains, they have lights. Yes. And in, in the the old trains, which are for still current, but not the uh, not the power function. What do we? What's the new one called? Powered up. Powered up. So you could put lights in the the blue passenger train and the the other cargo train, but they were sold separately. But he says that that you couldn't turn them on with the app; you had to have the remote. So okay, I don't. The way you're I the, you're the app you built the app to run your train, so you're gonna have to explain this to it. Okay, so okay, the app comes with a control panel that is right. specifically for each one of those sets right that's the only thing i've done is the, is that that okay if you go into the build it yourself control panel you can pull out any of the controls you want and and set them up however you want and thank you lego for not producing instructions for that because <laughs> it is a lot of you know, digging through YouTube videos of other people who are trying to solve it and trying to figure out and reading things online because some of that stuff is gets pretty complicated because some of the controls they put in there, when you just look at them, they're complicated. Once you know how they work, it's like, ah, now I have a little bit of a programming background, so maybe I'm not trying to say I'm smarter or nothing, but it's just I have a little bit of programming background, so I know some of that stuff makes sense when you're you know, adding an accumulator and you're keeping track of things here and you're doing that and you're doing this. But yeah, you can do it with the new, with the old or the first powered up, but you would have to build a custom control and to get it to turn on the lights and to, you know, run two hubs like I was doing out of multiple, multiple motors in the, on one hub and all that kind of stuff. But it sounds to me like he's got, he's, what he's saying is the, I guess I have the app. I couldn't, it's probably in there, the new sets. Mm -hmm. um unless they have them location locked still uh but yeah it sounds to me like he can um turn the lights on and stuff just r directly from that control panel so for that set did you did you put lights in in your uh in the ones you have i have not no mostly because my hub only has two ports and i'm using both ports for motors okay, okay. so you would have to use the lights would be the I other port now I guess I could put another hub in just for lights, but then that gets you know then that makes your custom program even more complicated because now you're having to deal with three hubs. And I can't remember the maximum amount of hubs you can daisy chain together in the app. You can also somehow with just the remote. I've had I've had intermittent luck with it, and I think it's all about the versions. You have to get everything up to date to the exact same version. And it, it, it feels like, I don't know this for a hundred percent, but it feels like you have to, let's say, let's say Legos at version three and you have a version one hub. It doesn't feel like they go straight to version three. It's like, you got to go to version two and then go to version three or something. It's like, they're not very smart because I've upgraded all of them to the, to the, what feels like the current version. Cause they don't tell you the versions that you're upgrading to. But then they still don't do, they don't all sync together. But then, you know, maybe a week later you upgrade it again and it's like, oh, wait, now it's working. It's, it seems very odd. It, plus, you also have, you know, they're all white controllers. So if you don't number them, you get confused really quickly as to whether I upgrade that hub or not. <laughs> the app doesn't really tell you. It's kind of buried in there. Lego 
and technology. Yeah. They don't mix. Yeah, you're talking about upgrading the hubs. I don't think I've up. I, I haven't well, used my trains in a in a long in a right, while. Well, so. <laughs> You know, it really doesn't make any difference that the – now, I, I shouldn't say that it doesn't make any difference. There, I have a hub somewhere that is not at the right version because Dakota did the other day. He turned on – what did he turn on? Was it the Crocodile? I think it was the Crocodile, yeah. He said, I want to get it out play with it. So we put it on the layout and he played with it. When you played with it with the remote control, it, act, it acted like it was uh, a remote control car. You had to hold the button down to make it go forward or backwards. Mm-hmm. Right. But all the trains should they should speed up or slow down based on how many times you click the button. Mm-hmm. Right. So it wasn't holding that. It wasn't holding that right. But it, I pulled my phone up, pulled the app up and pinged into the into it. And then it worked fine. Uh, and then I can't remember what we did. But it's, it's, actually, I think he just sit there and played with it. And he just held the button down. So to go 100 miles an hour. Well, the crocodile, it's pretty <laughs> slow anyway. But uh yeah, that is, that's one thing Lego has done really well over the years is they've made their instructions for building sets better and better and better. I don't think anybody would disagree with that statement. But their technology crap, they have <laughs> not, not made better at all. If nothing, they've made worse. And And when you think it can't get worse, it gets worse. Yeah. Yeah. So... So wow. I'm still I'm still ready to get my job there at Lego. My so, empty so you're desk. saying right now, Joey, you could you could buy a passenger a blue passenger train that's still on the shelf, pull it out, and your hub would would have to be updated before you could use it. Not not before you used it, but it it would work. But what would happen was is if you started using it in conjunction with ones that were updated, it oh, may okay. not work correctly. Okay. But if you took that controller and that hub and just played with the train out of the box, built it, ran it, it would work fine. You know, it, you know, it, it would, it would do fine. But if you threw it into my basement with probably I've got five or six of those powered up hubs right now sitting on the city and the controllers are, you know, I don't, I don't even know if the controllers can be updated, but they're all probably at different levels of, of upgrade they don't they don't play well together they they get confused at times and that does kind of get frustrating now part of it's just because i've not done the due diligence to make sure everything's up to whatever oh, you you would think that it would give you an alert just like your phone you turn on your phone and one of the apps need to be updated sometimes it just automatically updates and it's shaded you know and you could see the right and you do you get that but it doesn't seem like you get it all the time and I, yeah. again, I don't know how often they're updating these. Do they, you know, it's, it seemed like there for a while I updated. I, it, I, I went, I felt like I went through and grabbed all of the hubs that I had and one at a time, put batteries in them, turned them on, connected them to the phone and tried to update them. Now, I, again, I don't know how long it takes the app to decide, Oh, this one needs to be updated. And is it saying, well, it, it because it's all hidden. If it would say this app is, and maybe it does somewhere and I don't see it, but if it says this hub is version two and version three is available, great, put version three on there, you know, or if it says it's a version one or it says it's a version, you know, my luck, it'll say it's a version four, but three is the only one available. <laughs> like, what the heck? And then by the time your hub gets updated, you don't feel like playing with your train anymore. You know, that's no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> that's no doubt because it takes forever. I um, don't you know, for a train guy, you would think I'd have this stuff nailed down, but the frustration level outweighs <laughs> outweighs it, and I think that's a problem for Lego. Yeah, and and I know the the you know nine volt will never come back. Anything like that will never ever probably come back. But there was never frustration. No, no, it just worked. Yeah, um, I agree. So if you made it this long, what is the word for the day? Frustration? <laughs> How frustrated are you with your Lego technology? Yes. <laughs> what problems have you incurred? What yeah. technological problem? This is like the technological problem podcast. Thank you. For <laughs> <that. Yeah. laughs>
<laughs> we're just figuring out how to blame Lego for no video on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, so, it's my internet provider. We've already blamed. We've already blamed Lego. It yeah, we did. We did. That's right. That's exact. I forgot. I got a short memory. Yeah. Come at me, Lego. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the comments pulled up. Uh, okay. So Andreas Carlson. Great discussion as always. Thank you. Regarding the topic of yours, I'd hate to not have the physical instructions. I'm in front of a screen much of my time. Lego is a way to get away from that. Same with children. <laughs> Lego should be a way to keep the kids away from screens. I thought they. I thought she was talking about what Lego should be a way to get away from the kids. <laughs> no, I totally, hundred percent agree with him. And you know what? I just realized is that because we've not had images in this, and we're not been looking at each other, it's like I haven't necessarily been looking at the screen. Yeah, right. I. And so I don't feel tired. Oh, <laughs> wow. And uh, we, we haven't had a problem talking. So. No, that's true. Yeah. As, and I, I'm trying to get Joey to buy something, but I have nothing for you this time, Java. Well, you almost <laughs> got me to buy a postcard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Drew Bet, no Xavier G. Good show. I listened during the streaming above the hot water and a towel above my head. Feel a lot better now. Uh, <laughs> Good fun. Did sick. Joey put on put on his head cap to avoid comments on the COVID hair on his COVID haircut? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. The next video we did, I, I told you you needed a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Drew Betts, I haven't watched every Brixar video, but I have watched every new Brixar video since discovering the Brixar channel when I came out of my dark ages in December of 2016. Oh my goodness! Well, there's been a lot of videos since 2016. I I, I, uh, I, I actively tried to watch all the Brickzar videos yeah. at one. It's it's tough. I have actually I <laughs> have actively me. tried to watch them all too. I, and and I was I'll, there. Sometime yep. I'll get a I'll get a, uh, a one that pops up in my feed, an older one, and I'm like I don't remember that video, and I click on it, and I, there's my comment. So yeah, I guess <laughs> I've watched it. <laughs> Yeah. I, I get videos I don't remember making them. <laughs> uh, Zipper Z, I hear the term ter territory in, a, in tertiary. art. Tertiary. Tertiary, yeah. In art, a fair amount. Like, the, like with colors, primary, secondary, tertiary. I think Joey meant to say rudimentary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I get the, it's weird he said that because... Unrelated to this, talking about that in the previous video, I was thinking about it because tertiary is third, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're on the third planet. And I always <laughs> thought that tertiary was refer referring to the Earth. Oh. Because it's the third planet. Yeah. Hmm. But now I, I don't, I, I, I'm just, that's me just. Well, I'm going to be honest up. with you. I'm not an art guy. I've never heard that term before. Well, see, I guess I heard, I've heard it before, and I guess, I guess the way I've misunderstood it was because well, I was like in a tertiary examination. I can't remember what I said, but I guess maybe it would be like a follow-up or a third examination of the situation, not like the uh, primary or the first. But that's just my ignorance. So hey, you know they, have these, they, they have these things called dictionaries. I should try to learn how to use one. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm way beyond learning new stuff. I'm mm -hmm. just going to stick with the old stuff, but if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So, yeah. Just be loud and wrong. Yes. Then people will believe you. <laughs> I still have made my living. <laughs> have you guys uh, got your stickers yet? No. Uh, you know, I had I got the package, but I haven't opened the package. Okay. I haven't got it. I checked today. I'm probably going to do it tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, Rula, pick new one of the brick picked new one of the BrickLink designer program sets not long ago. And one thing I'm really not excited about is that I would need to download the instructions. Not digging this going away from instructions thing that Lego is trying to pull. So the, there won't be instructions with these BrickLink designers? No. Is that right? Yeah, that's what it is. Yes, that's right. I didn't know that. The third round or whatever this is. The oh, the, okay. The new one. one the, yeah. The, okay. Yeah. I didn't get any of those. So all these people who are buying those for investment purposes and they turn around and sell them in 10 years, they're going to do what? Because they're going to sell a set that doesn't have 
The you start doing instructions, and by then it, it it might be gone off the net. Well, especially if, I mean, you know, we talked about that last time that Lego does have a lot of instructions on there, but this is not not their set, you know. Right. It's it's Bricklink set. So will they have the same? Especially if it goes south like Samsonite deal did. Yeah. Bricklink may not exist to Lego in a few years. Uh, Chris Cummings, I worked in the 90s for a company that had a display case full of model vehicles from the companies we made parts for. I wonder if those Samsonite logo figures were gifts for suppliers or they mm. could have been gifts for employees. Very well could have been, yeah. Yeah, they might have been, uh, what do they call them, salesman samples? Go around yep. and hand them out? Yep. Um, Keel Jones, I never fail CMS either. But here is my complaint. Right now, you can go on. You can go on Bricklink and get a full set of CMF sealed. You will no longer be able to do that for, for future sets. Ooh, That's true. good point. That's true. You won't be able to walk into a Lego store and have a Lego employee help you find the ones you need either. Unless they bring back bump codes or something. Yeah, there, there, there may be a way. I don't know what the accuracy will be, depending on this, but. Theoretically, if they all have different weights, right, you could with a scale with a counting scale. But they would have if any of them had any two figures weighed exactly the right. same or were very very close. It might be hard. But okay, I already think it's creepy to go into Walmart and stand there and feel up kids' toys to try and figure out which one. Scale. I'm not bringing a scale. Well, I'm <laughs> saying that it's like if you bought a whole bunch of them, then you weigh right. Them. Yeah, yeah. If it, at a Bricklink, yeah, for a Bricklink store, yes, you're right. Yeah. yeah. But then you were like, "How? What's the chance? What if the, an extra piece was put in a set?" Sure, exactly. I, I, with the minifigures, I have had different extra pieces occasionally. Like one would have one more extra piece than another. Like with, with the little small pieces, they throw in extra. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's not completely uncommon to see that. Yeah, I've seen it myself. Uh, Dude, you twenty says, "Hey, Jab, Joey, Jabo, and Earl, Logan's run." Sorry, I missed commenting on the 50 episode. Y'all did a good job. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Juju. Always appreciate it. Yes. Logan Run that, was correct. Yes, and I've already forgot what that was the answer to. What was the uh, question? It was one of the movies that we were, oh, okay. another 40 year old movie that we spoiled. Oh, it's okay. Carousel was the. Carousel. The question. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, Chris Cummings, Gazoon Hype. Which one of us sneezed? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Logan's Run was also a TV show. I have those episodes on DVD from Walmart. Oh, I really I liked did not know because that. It was able to go into more storyline depth. Though I never have seen the movie, I usually run across a YouTube channel that mentioned it. The last one was talking about the wardrobe, and it's the last major science fiction production with what I call old school sci fi filmmaking before Star Wars changed everything from special effects, storylines, and things related to the production, such as books and toys. In the early 90s, I was a heavy watcher of Sci-Fi Channel on cable, and I loved it when they had celebrities showing their favorite movies. LeVar Burton's favorite is Forbidden Planet. And I really oh, think wow. Forbidden Planet still is a great movie. It's like one of my top ten sci-fi ultimates because it still holds up today in all aspects. Wow, that that was a mouthful. LeVar Burton, that's the Reading Rainbow guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I... Uh, Sin Killer Tachikawa, Logan's Run is awesome, and I won't let anyone tell me otherwise. <laughs> he also says, look, Captain Jaboos. <laughs> I keep trying to tell myself I don't need to collect Scala and Belleville just because they are weird. You telling me there's a Lego Island references is, is making it hard for me not to buy and get a, a gateway drug right now. <laughs> well, by now he's probably saw your haul video and he's probably already ordered it. <laughs> yep. Uh, Keel Jones, Jabo had a tertiary. How do you say that word? Tertiary. Tertiary search for the definition of the word tertiary. <laughs> P.S. Earl, I think you were thinking of the Woodwright shirt shop with Roy Underhill, and I love that show. That is exactly the one I was. I actually replied to that because that is 
the exact one I was talking about. And yep. then Pixelated Dream said he was thinking of the new Yankee workshop from the 90s. That They came on back to back. I think, I don't remember which one came on first, but uh, the new Yankee workshop was more popular or more widely known because he was also on this old house. Yeah. And, uh, well, he had power tools so he could do things quicker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then pixelated dream says, uh, that was last week's question about, Oh no, that was me telling him that the, last week's question was about Norm Abrams. Yeah. Grace Andrews says an interesting discussion. Well, I hope they find the, I hope finds the same this week. Brian Bricks, great show. <laughs> Bricks R says, I thought we were all looking away for the thumbnail. <laughs> he ruined it again. Looking... <laughs> oh, when I found that picture of you looking straight at the camera and arrested Uh oh. Uh oh. What was that? That was Alexa telling me she can't get onto the internet. Oh, no. I can't get her to be quiet. I've missed up. Uh... Oh, you're echoing really bad. Yeah. Yes. Uh, hey Alexa, turn off the lights. I'm having trouble connecting. <laughs> I keep trying. Thanks. Uh, Axel Plate Jabo, you might have to read this one because it's in German. I can't. I don't know what I've done. <laughs> oh, I think wait, I'm here twice. Here we go. Translate to English. Axel Plate says. Yes, the next time the bell rings and there are 85 million people at the door who all look the same and have children's cutlery, then you'll know that it's too late to run away. Isn't the Samsonite logo printed on a Lego torso not allowed by Lego? Is it uh -huh. a custom print? Should Lego sue Samsonite? Lego probably has already sued Samsonite in some form. Yeah, of yeah I think so. And then Brixar says, is it raining in Sweden? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, hey, Jabbo's in here twice. You just said that, I know, but I can add you to the Kick one of me out. I can't figure it out. Oh, okay. Hang on. Uh, all right. Are you still there? I can hear you, but I don't know where my window went. Can oh, I can uh, hear you. Yeah. Okay. If can hear me, I, it's like everything's gone off of my computer. I don't see anything, and it's like I must have re-entered the studio again. That's I so, kicked you out. So, Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Say two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, go ahead. So, Andrea said it's probably raining somewhere in Sweden. Not where they, I live, though. If you're in Sweden and driving a vehicle, and the, head, the headlights always has to be on. Night and day. It's the law since 1977. Yeah, it's the law here, too. That doesn't mean everybody follows. It's kind no, of... Yeah. doesn't mean everybody... Does. You know, a lot of people don't think laws apply to them. My truck lights are on all the time. There's you, the automatic. You got those, those daytime running lights? Yes. Uh, Chris Cummings, I should work on my Swedish Air Force Road Air Base again. I bought some more Lego road plates at Kroger. They had those and a number of sets on clearance, five ninety nine each. They only had three boxes. I bought about one hundred and fifty dollars in clearance at Lego. Also got the Harry Potter Hospital for twelve ninety nine. Yeah. Do you know what Lego is called at Kroger? What? Legos. <laughs> they, they act, and the sign in the aisle says Legos. Huh. That is I hilarious. Love I love it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, want, I wonder if Lego can sue him for copyright infringement. <laughs> all right. That's all the comments. That's all the comments? Yep. Well, well, it's been about 100, or an hour and 30 minutes or so. I can't. We, we spent about 12 minutes at the beginning of this <laughs> trying to figure out if we could hear each other. <laughs> we should, when we got going, we should have said, "If you're still listening, four, <laughs> two. <Yeah. laughs> this episode of the A Fool Podcast is brought to I, you by the number two. <laughs> I think I will probably, when I download, well, I got to get internet back first. But when I download that that first twelve minutes or so, I'll see how bad it is, and I I might edit that into a 
uh, a little on its own thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's kind of it, it, it was when we realized that Earl was hearing us, but it was like a couple of minutes after we said it. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when I said two and y'all caught it three minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So wait a minute. Were we the ones behind, or were you? I don't know. Yeah, next video, he's gonna say two, and then he's gonna pause for thirty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh what, my goodness! It was a, a, a comic book I used to um, read. The 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 main character was basically dumb, and somebody. At, in one issue where they would, they would call them slow of mind. Right. And it might go two or three issues later and he would be thinking to himself and he go, what did he mean? Slow of mind. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. So that's what we are. So, so <laughs> since you bring up comic books, when you were in your comic book, heyday buy-in, were you literally buying every title that was coming out? Oh, no, 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 no. I would, um, I'd get the catalog from the the company, which was the one that I bought from back then in the nineties, late eighties and nineties was Westfield comics. Uh -huh. They're based out of Wisconsin. They would send me a paper. They had their own like newsletter, but it had all the issues that would be coming out in the, like two or three months. And you, you look through it and then you fill out your form and you send it back to them. And then they would, and they, you know, and three months later, you would get those issues. Uh, so it would be, yeah, they were there was way too many to buy all of them. So you were getting them direct. <laughs> I was getting them direct from okay. yeah a distributor, and okay. yeah, and they would be a, f a fraction of the retail price. Okay. Yeah, or actually, it'd be like twenty five percent off or something like. I can't even remember what the prices were, but it was never full full price. And a, a bunch of them, you were buying multiple yeah. copies? Yeah. So it was started off, I would just buy the titles I wanted, but then it got to where um, if you needed to buy 50 copies of an issue to get the platinum copy, I would do that. Okay. <laughs> and that's when it just like, okay, this is going overboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can imagine budgeting that. Yeah. No. And you know how I, I guess we're at the end of the episode, but like people get frustrated when their franchise gets mutilated, like Star Trek has, mm -hmm. or um, some people don't like some of the Star Wars things, and that's what happened to me with comic books. They started changing the yeah. characters that I liked, and I didn't like it, and I, that's what got me to stop buying comic books so so of the how many did you actually read i read um i read fantastic four all the spider-man titles i read hulk daredevil um batman grew the wanderer magnus i read all the i read all the valiant comic books which this might be a lot of things that people aren't oh i remember valiant i remember, valiant. I, remember yeah. I remember valiant with the spawn and um that was um, Dark Horse, I think. Well, well, did they they had some crossovers? They had a value and, uh, and something crossover. Yeah, the, the, they would do um, you know like the RoboCop, Terminator, Aliens yeah. type thing. Yeah, I remember those. Like, cause I remember the Magnus, but I remember so Spawn was Dark Horse. I remember trying to buy every title, every title that Dark Horse would come out with. Oh, <laughs> and. <laughs> To have the number one issue of every one, you know, yeah. and then you would realize that the number three issue was the one you should have bought. Yeah. Because... <laughs> and, then, and then it was like what ended up happening is that the thing that you weren't thinking about would actually end up being worth something, not the number one or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, when Todd McFarlane came on the scene, those early issues he did with uh, Spider Man. Transformers of all things, or no, or maybe it was GI Joe's. It's the, it might have been GI Joe. He did a comic book, and it's like all of a sudden those are all of a sudden worth something. And then Rob Liefeld was another artist, and he did New Mutants. 
All right. So the first appearance of, or the first issues of New Mutants that he did, which was at the tail end of that series, those became valuable. All right. The, mm-hmm. One of the like the second or third issue he did was Deadpool. Mm-hmm. And so that oh, one was yeah. like for years, it was always the first issues of Rob Liefeld. Those were worth a lot. And then all of a sudden this Deadpool, like 30 years later, becomes popular. <laughs> Yeah, and those went crazy. Those, 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 and so that's actually worth even more. And then c- titles I never read, like Moon Knight. I had all these issues of Moon Knight, never read it. And then you know, forty years later, they make a a, a series on TV, and now those are crazy expensive. Mm-hmm. You got to strike now, though, because in in another year or two, they won't be worth. Well, they won't be worth it the now. Yeah, you know, you, you know what what drives me crazy because i know i had them and i i don't have them anymore is the marvel cards the trading yeah, cards. The fir- i have i still got a few of them i don't have a complete set of them mm-hmm. i sold my complete set but i have a bunch of them you want some <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah i don't know i i just know i had them and I know that, money <laughs> do, yeah. do, do, do you want some of the Marvel card. I, like I said, I don't have a complete set, but I got some. Yeah, because those just... I remember having them, and I don't know where they are. I don't think mm. I have them anymore. I think oh, I've okay. like, lost them moving or lost them in the... They may have been in my shed. I told you I lost all that. My Most of the stuff in my shed was ruined. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was depressing. Oh, things. Yeah, I know. Yes. It didn't okay. bother me till I got to a box that had uh like my Sega my Sega oh. C D system. Yeah. The C D oh. for the Sega and I was like, Oh man. Yeah. Just don't just throw it away and don't look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Mm. But, Water. We need it to live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it destroys everything. Mm-hmm. Well, Jabo, you want to get us out of here? All right. So, yes, if you like technology, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. I can't <laughs> find it because I can't even see where we're at. But this has been the April <laughs> Podcast, brought to you by the number two and the word frustration. <laughs> yeah. Be sure to subscribe to Brick Trains and Earl, a.k.a. Mardi Gras Man 23, and I'm Jabo Brickstar something. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another a full Podcast. Maybe you'll even see us. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. All right, guys. See ya. See ya. See ya. I would leave, but I don't know where the exit buzzes.